My name is Dr. Gerald Winehouse, and I'll be speaking on mechanical ventilation from basic to advanced concepts. I have no relevant disclosures for this talk. When we talk about mechanical ventilation, uh, we talk about both the indications for it, and there are just a few, and then we'll talk briefly about the goals, and that's much more important than speaking to what many people are concerned about, which is the mode of ventilation. In terms of indications, there really are just a few simple ones. We mechanically ventilate people who are hypoxemic and unable to achieve adequate oxygenation through other means. Hypercapnia, elevated PCO2 or carbon dioxide levels, so that patients are unable to maintain adequate alveolar ventilation for gas exchange. <clears throat> there are patients we ventilate because of their uh, work of breathing that they simply can't match and that they uh, fatigue. And then there's airway protection uh, for patients who have, are either obtunded or uh, otherwise have a jeopardized airway. The goals of mechanical ventilation, therefore, are really to maintain an adequate oxygenation, guarantee a certain amount of alveolar ventilation so that the carbon dioxide level is managed, um, avoiding harm is one of the things that has achieved the most attention in recent years, as we know that some ways that we can mechanically ventilate patients actually can contribute to lung injuries, and we'll certainly talk more about that. We want to optimize patient comfort. That's just part of our mission, of course, as compassionate caregivers. And then one of our main goals is to uh, liberate patients and extubate them from mechanical ventilation as soon as possible. We have certain variables that are within our control, uh, and that's really pressure, volume, and flow, and time. And when you talk about pressure and flow, we're really talking about resistance. And when we're talking about pressure and volume, that's really what uh, the, are the components of compliance. <clears throat> the other thing we have some control over is the triggering. We'll talk about that and cycling in just a moment. So triggering is what really begins the inspiratory cycle. It's, it's what tells the mechanical ventilator that it's time to begin the inspiratory phase of respiration. And for some patients, that's time. That is, we can set the mechanical ventilator to a certain time. And if, if we set a number of breaths per minute at 10, then every six seconds, the ventilator will look to deliver a breath. It can also be a pressure uh, uh, that triggers the ventilator. If the patient initiates a breath, for example, and there's a negative pressure deflection, then that can be sensed by the ventilator to trigger uh, the beginning of inspiration. And similarly, uh, it can be a flow trigger. So if the patient begins to take in a breath and the, the ventilator senses that inspiratory effort by way of a deflection in flow, then it will initiate uh, the, uh, the inspiratory phase. Cycling, conversely, is how the ventilator switches from the inspiratory phase to the expiratory phase. And much like with triggering, it can be regulated by either time, flow, or volume. So time, as in pressure control ventilation, simply means that after a certain period of the inspiratory phase, the, the ventilator will then cycle to the expiratory phase. Um, similarly with flow, if the ventilator senses that inspiratory flow has decreased to a certain point, it will then cycle the ventilator to exhalation uh, or volume if a uh, and volume ventilation, such as an assist control, then uh, once the set volume has been reached, the, the uh, mechanical ventilator will then cycle the breath to the expiratory phase.